Hello everybody, my name is Laura Whelan along with my co-presenter Ashley McCachran. Today we're representing an Actus UPEI alongside our faculty advisors Andrew Carruthers and Sophia Yao. In September of 2018, our team got together for the first time, and upon taking a look at the current environmental landscape, we found that the paper industry is a huge contributor to environmental issues. The paper industry in Canada forms 26% of the country's municipal waste, and the emissions created make it the third largest polluter of air, water, and land. 20% of paper is lost during the normal recycling process, and one ton of paper pollutes the equivalent of 320,000 glasses of water. After decades of deforestation and an abundance of plastic pollution, the world needs more green initiatives like our own. The conventional greeting card industry is slowing down, and due to a new generation of environmentally conscious buyers, there is a market for unconventional greeting cards. The population is straying away from expensive greeting cards covered in glitter and plastic and starting to move towards more sustainable alternatives. Our solution, Berry and Bloom, uses paper waste from the university and other PI organizations to produce and sell plantable seed paper products. Currently, we mainly offer plantable greeting cards. However, we also offer custom marketing products for companies that want a green initiative, such as business cards, seed coins, and brochures. Our innovative process starts with collecting the unwanted paper from UPEI, then we shred, blend, and pour it into a tub of water. Then we use a custom tool of a frame and a filter to pan out sheets of paper, as well as adding our seeds. Our upcycling technique prevents paper from entering the harmful recycling process. In traditional recycling, chemicals are added to bleach and produce the paper. These chemicals and wastes typically end up in our waterways, but in our process we use no chemicals at all. Traditional recycling uses more energy and water than our handcrafted upcycling method. And since we upcycle paper directly from campus, we eliminate any pollution from transportation. Once our handmade paper is dry, we print custom designs on it, cut in half, and fold it into the final product, and here are a few examples. This is what happens when you bury our cards under a thin layer of soil, water regularly, and let it grow in the sunlight. The seeds we are currently using include wildflowers and chia, which are non-invasive and attract pollinators such as bees and butterflies. We are currently completing multiple tests on our products, including success rate testing for growth, shelf life testing, and soil testing. With Berry and Bloom, we offer more than just a greeting card. We offer an experience that allows our customers to deliver their loved ones a message that can be planted in their hearts and in our earth. A portion of the revenue from the sales of our cards is put towards funding our environmental education curriculum. Berry and Bloom provides education for youth through interactive classroom sessions where we teach on important environmental topics such as the importance of bees, trees, and climate change. We visit elementary schools to integrate environmental awareness into the classroom all across Prince Edward Island. These are some of the comments that the children gave us after the presentation, which not only shows us that they did learn from us, but also demonstrated the educational disconnect between children and the environment that we plan to change. We have created an online educational platform that children and their parents can access outside of the classroom. It includes interactive games, video lectures, and quizzes. This time last year, we had visited two classrooms directly impacting 40 children. However, in this year alone, we have already visited eight classrooms and directly empowered 170 children on important environmental topics. We are able to provide our educational program to Island Elementary Schools by selling 572 plantable seed cards and 200 seed coins. This year, from the sale of our products, we have received a revenue of $3,000. By producing our products, we have diverted 69.4 pounds of paper and upcycled 6,940 sheets of unwanted paper. Due to our upcycling process, we have been able to divert 85 kilograms of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. As you can see, our impacts have increased substantially in the past year, reaching four times more students and almost seven times more sheets of paper. We plan to continue to grow, reaching even more students with the help from the Minister of Education for Prince Edward Island. By creating more awareness for our product and mission, we will be able to increase sales and ultimately the amount of paper we recycle. We'd like to thank our sponsors 3M and Innovation PEI for believing in our vision. We invite you to do the same so that we can continue to inspire the environmental leaders of tomorrow. Thank you.
One third of all food produced annually ends up in the landfill, but there is more loss than just the food. The water that was used for the irrigating the food, the nutrients taken up from the soil, and the energy needed to transport, package, and process that food is lost as well. Each year, food waste in Canada creates some 56.6 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions. In total, the value of all food that is lost or wasted in Canada is a staggering 49 billion. There is roughly enough food to feed every Canadian for five months. With the impending impacts of climate change, such as increased flooding and droughts, this systematically unsustainable food system cannot continue. We are food sharing Acadia, and our goal is to prevent this unnecessary waste. Acadia was founded by a group of Acadia students through Enactus Acadia in Wolfville, Nova Scotia. Our mission is to divert food from going to the landfill by redistributing it throughout our community. This initiative is modeled after similar groups across the world. The students that started this project were introduced to food sharing while on exchange in Norway, where they volunteered with a local food sharing group. They were inspired by the positive impact that the project had in the community that it inspired them to start something similar upon returning to Canada. And we knew Wolfel would be extremely accepting and in need of this. The project itself runs really simple. How it works is we create a Facebook page to connect students to food. Individuals post on the page with information regarding what food is available and where. People either share food from their homes that they won't eat or leftovers from catered events on campus. Others can then bring containers and eat the food. On February 25th, we began doing daily pickups of food from the local grocery store to redistribute that food that would have otherwise gone to waste to campus. In February, we also started an agreement with two of the local farmers markets where they will call or text us whenever they're they need us to pick up their unwanted food before it goes to waste. So far we have over 300 members in the Facebook group. On average, there are two posts each day. Each day we weigh the food and we deliver it to our drop-off point. Between March 2nd and March 19th, we diverted approximately 275 pounds of food. In some simpler terms, this would be like 275 loaves of bread. The majority of these are individuals attending catered conferences or meetings where prepared food is left over after. Students then bring their Tupperware to these locations and pick up the food. To promote this project, we hung posters around campus, frequently using and sharing around the Facebook page, or more simply, spreading our idea through word of mouth. We also distribute the food in a very public location so that more people become aware of us. Numerous professors have been very supportive of this project and often post in the group when they attend a catered meeting or conference. They also encourage students to pick up leftover food afterwards. The beauty of this project is that it can function completely without money. We simply connect individuals to food waste and they are responsible for picking it up. We are proud to have received the 3M Project Accelerator Grant, which allowed us to host events such as beeswax making activities that all promoted sustainable food and preventing food waste education. We have collaborated with a number of groups, and we'd like to thank all our partners who have helped us along the way. Going forward, we plan to continue reaching out to local restaurants and grocery stores to prevent further waste. We are currently collaborating with computer science students to develop an app to function as our platform of communicating available food. This would allow us to reach more people, those who don't have Facebook, and to tailor notifications and messaging boards. And finally, what makes this project so incredible is how easily it can be replicated elsewhere. We have already begun discussing with students and Enactus members at NSCC and Dalhousie and plan to help them create their own food sharing groups. Given the expected consequences of climate change, we cannot afford to throw out perfectly good food. Everyone has to eat every single day, and so the food choices we make can have a significant impact. We are proud to have taken this small but substantial step towards sustainability and hope that people feel empowered to prevent unnecessary waste through sharing delicious food.
Hi, I'm Nicholas Laval, one of the founders of McLean Valley Biofiltration Technology, CIC. We're a startup company affiliated with the mere idea of designing a product that will disrupt the water filtration. So the agriculture industry is in some hot water. They're currently receiving scrutiny from the public in terms of its ethics and feed, and also scrutiny from the government in terms of the regulation currently being prepared. So the agriculture industry, it's growing. But unless it addresses these problems, it's going to see some serious uh, hurdles in its growth. The dilemma the agriculture industry is facing is their current and traditional methods of filtration are no longer sustainable when it comes to their effluents. The effluents that they're dealing with is a high concentration of nitrogenous waste that is either being dumped, shipped away, or utilizes a lot of maintenance fees in order to be taken care of. But we have a natural solution. One based in nature relying on, well, sorry, mimicking the relationship between algae. And we've been researching how to harness this relationship and to implement it in a mechanical that is not only more cost effective than our competitors, but is viable for the agriculture industry. So as I said, this is a nature-based solution. It's something that's been around for thousands of years and has been evolving to become one of the best filters on the planet. And I'm talking about biobalance. So the concept of biomimicry is taking that process that has been working for so long, mimicking it in the processes we use today. Hence, we will be utilizing biobalance within our mechanical apparatus to provide clarification for the aquaculture. Now that solution, when benchmark prototyped, looks like what you're seeing on the slide here. Now to break it down, what this prototype did was split up into the traditional filtration methods, which is the tower with the three totes, we'll call that stage one, and the biomimicry filtration method, which is the larger contained or tote on the right-hand side. We'll call that stage two. Now stage one, had water with microplastics flow through it and was catching any particulate using a strainer with a pores, um, with pores around the size of uh, one millimeter down to 0.5 millimeters. That was, that was it for stage one. Stage two, on the other hand, had a pump jettisoning water into uh, an area where the muscles were able to then siphon off as much particulate it came. And our results for stage one, the traditional methods, we saw a 44% reduction in suspended solids. But stage two, now remember back to the video I showed a little earlier where the bivalves were cleaning out the uh, fish tank. We saw that reduction of suspended solids in stage two at around 76. With that validation, we were ready to go out of the lab and move. So we enlisted the expertise of Ingenuity and after going through their discovery program, we designed our first viable product that could be installed in an agriculture facility. With our technology ready to be deployed, we began developing our business plan. And in doing so, we discovered we had three streams of revenue. The first being the sale of our biofilters to the agriculture industry. That one was a gimme. But the second, we discovered we would need to, on a, a regular schedule, replace the filters, the media, the bivalves, if you will, so that they were able to constantly filter out at their top capacity. And that could be done on a subscription service, that replacement. So that was our second stream of revenue. And our third was after we've collected all of this bivalves and biomass, we could convert it into a biodiesel through a process called hydrothermal processing. And essentially turn the biomass into a biodiesel and then that biodiesel can be sold to an external market and we're looking to partner with sustained technologies and i'd be happy to go further into this in the q a section over the two years we've had to rely on the expertise knowledge and experience of over a dozen individuals spanning from uh, the commerce world to the scientific world from marketers to uh, industry experts to marine biologists and masters in marine biology uh, phd candidates in water engineering all of them have been pouring in their time and effort, including the three founders of the company, Chen Zhang, Demir Allen, and myself, who were full-time to bring this company. And that team has been working on the company's value proposition for our local and global partners. That proposition being that our product is more efficient. It, on average, has a 6% saving of total operating costs compared to our competitors. It reduces the footprint. And for a minimum investment of 15,000 for one unit, we're starting small. A key milestone would be commercializing with one of the three companies shown on the screen, either KDC plants, Clearwater. With our filter implemented into these agriculture facilities, we will be helping these companies to meet the United Nations Sustainability Development Goal, clean water and sanitation, sustainable cities and communities, good health and well-being, industry, innovation, infrastructure, and most importantly, life below water. So that's our next steps. Our technology is ready, our business plan is sound, and with this funding, we can move on to our next stage of testing, where we take our technology and we implement it into the potential partners that we look to co-develop our technology with. Thank you for listening. I'm open to any questions, concerns, or comments.
the expression that there's plenty of fish in the sea, but a new report says those fish could soon be outnumbered by plastic garbage. The Ellen MacArthur Foundation released a report saying if the amount of plastic in the world's oceans continues to increase, there will be more pounds of plastic than there are pounds of fish in the ocean by 2050. You may have heard this news before about our alarming problem with single-use plastic, but have you ever stopped to think about your impact? In Canada, the average person goes through 100 kilograms of single-use plastic each year. We were able to discover specific statistics in the U.S. for plastic bags and wrap. The average family goes through 1,000 plastic bags and 24 rolls of plastic wrap every year. That means that the average family is contributing 23 pounds into landfills in just baggies and plastic wrap. It also means that they are doing so at an average cost of $200 a year. We began research two years ago on a project working with beehives to deal with the declining bee population. This research showed us that the beeswax produced from the beehives was much easier to work with as it had less health and safety regulations and could be easily removed from the hives without causing the bees distress. Once we discovered that we would be working with beeswax, we knew the ideal product solution to create and sell would be an eco-friendly wrap that preserves food and reduces plastic waste. Beeswax food wrap is flexible and will cling to surfaces. This product will help reduce the amount of plastic that Nova Scotians contribute to landfills each day. We'd identified a project that tackled two environmental concerns, our declining bee population and single-use plastic. This is Project High Five. Project High Five's product is made by taking a piece of cloth that is then coated in melted beeswax. This beeswax wrap can be used as many times as you want. This wrap is washed gently in cold water. When the quality of the wrap starts to deteriorate, it is simple to apply more wax to extend the life of the wrap. It can be remelted in the oven whenever needed to kill bacteria and keep it fresh. We sell wraps in packs of three for $15. Now, a report in the World Economic Forum cites as much as 65% of children entering primary school today will work in roles that don't currently exist. Presenting youth with opportunities to explore entrepreneurship is one way to prepare them for an uncertain future. We saw this as another opportunity for Project High Five. We would work with youth in Nova Scotia. We designed the project with five main fundamentals. To build self-confidence and self-awareness in the youth through entrepreneurial and environmental workshops. To empower youth through the entrepreneurial action in hopes to provide them with sustainable employment. To educate the youth on the impacts of single-use plastic. To teach the youth the importance of bees to our food security by connecting them to local beekeepers for our beeswax supply and to reduce the amount of waste in our landfills and CO2 released into our atmosphere. Last year, High Five began working with youth at Homebridge Youth Society. Homebridge is a nonprofit organization that provides residential care in the child welfare system. These youth come to Homebridge in crisis. All would have experienced a lack of resources, some would have experienced abuse or addiction. High Five is designed to empower the youth to run their own business and Connects the youth to our members through our mentorship relationship, which is crucial for skill building and entrepreneurial confidence. We have a focus on training and our workshops include the environmental importance of bees, waste reduction and recycling, sales and marketing, and financial management. This will provide a strong foundation for the youth to create and sell their products. All our wraps are sold under the name Wax Wraps. This year, we are working with seven youth and have run two workshops and 15 production meetings. In addition to their knowledge-based workshops, we train the youth on production, which they now do independently. Last year at Regionals, production had not started yet, and we had $450 in pre-sales. We are happy to announce that as of today, the youth have sold 91 packages for $1,365 in sales. This is an increase in sales of 203% year over year. With a profit margin of 75%, the youth have been able to make $1,023.75 in profits, in addition to the pride they have in some incredible environmental impact. The youth sell the wraps with our support through friends of the Homebridge Youth Society, at local markets, on our campus, and online. Remember in the beginning, we told you about your potential impact? With our sales, we have helped 45 families replace their single-use plastic for a savings of $9,000 a year and 1,035 pounds of waste. This also translates in a reduction of 2,347 kilograms of CO2 being released into our atmosphere. We believe that exposing youth to an entrepreneurial mindset will create a new generation of social entrepreneurs that will be empowered to create positive environmental change. And we are Enactus NSCC Ivany Campus.
Good day, judges. Welcome to the Scotiabank Climate Change Challenge. This year, Enactix Clarenville focused on grassroots initiatives to help educate our community on the fast fashion industry. We worked with our local sewing groups and library to create anxiety and dementia blankets from used jeans. As well, we brought our community together to help environmentally friendly bags to be used as a replacement for one-use plastic bags. Fashion is one of the world's most polluting industries. Given the critical risk our planet is facing, buying new clothes and accessories, especially ones produced unsustainably, only worsens the staggering levels of pollution. How do we discourage people from these types of quick purchases? Through education. This year, we created a social media campaign regarding fast fashion. For 10 days, we reached out to our community through Facebook and Instagram to educate them on fast fashion and the implications. Through this campaign, we reached over 5,000 people and engaged with over 1,400 people. Our education campaign focused on what fast fashion is, the impact that fast fashion is having on our planet, what actually happens to the clothes that are donated to charities and thrift stores, and how we can revolutionize our fashion purchases. To cap off this campaign, we launched our first clothing swap. Clothing swaps are a great alternative to traditional shopping. They are an effective way to declutter your closet, save money, and get a whole new to you wardrobe while minimizing waste and pollution. Our first clothing swap reached 5,200 people, engaged 111 responses with 15 participants, and over 150 articles of clothing. In this one clothing swap, we were able to divert 75 pounds of clothes from the landfill through our online discussions and with participants we are now preparing for a clothes and toy swap that focuses on children our next initiative focused on extending the life of reclaimed clothing take a minute and imagine how many pairs of jeans are sitting in your closet unworn stained or just on the path of being thrown out our team took a minute and we became horrified with the thought if all of these items are discarded, all the resources that went into creating these jeans could, would be lost. If we could extend the life of jeans by just 9 extra months of active use, we would reduce carbon, water, and waste footprints by around 20-30% to 30 each. Working with our local groups, we focused on ways we could repurpose these materials into needed products. The result was Project Comfort. Project Comfort uses donated jeans and denim materials in order to upcycle them into lap blankets for individuals with autism, dementia, and anxiety. These blankets provide sensory and tactile stimulation for the restless hands of someone with Alzheimer's or other forms of dementia, such as ADD or autism spectrum disability. Uh, I think it's a real benefit to my seniors to be able to work with younger people, teach them something, and it's a good inter intergenerational project. Through this project, we have redirected over 200 pairs of jeans from the landfill, saving 420,000 gallons of water and 2,000 kilograms of CO2. There are 1 million plastic bags being used every minute. There is 10.46 million tons of fabric waste created each year. Around the world, there is a willingness and a generosity of people from all fabrics of society to do something about it. This is how the concept for boomerang bags began. Our goal is to connect and empower local communities to tackle plastic and pollution at its source. How does this actually work? It is a four-step process. Create a community, gather fabrics, make bags, and distribute and start conversations. We have created a community of volunteers that are making our bags. The goal for our bags is to make them out of the materials that would otherwise have been discarded. We have had great success in running fabric drives, connecting with sewing groups and fabric stores. Our goal for the number of bags we want to make is 500 by the end of May. To date, we are on our way to meeting our goal. Currently, we have 122 bags ready for distribution. Through these three projects, we have created partnerships with SPCA, three sewing groups, Clairville Public Library, and a number of businesses have educated 5,000 people regarding the impact of fast fashion, have prevented the loss of resources already used, 420,000 liters of water and 2,000 kilograms of carbon dioxide by extending the life of these fabrics. We are Enactus Clarenville and we have continued the conversation on the impact that our everyday decisions have made on our environment.